Today we'll be going over an orthopedic hip examination. And the first thing we'll start out with would be a history. So when interviewing the patient, you're gonna listen for any traumas that may have occurred, if the patient has noticed any swelling, any changes in skin, redness, uh, any deformity in the, in the joint that they came in to have you examine. You're gonna listen for perhaps a bursitis. There might be some tenderness, swelling, maybe some redness in an area. Listen for tendinopathies any painful tendons or snapping, something that the patient will tell you about in that area. You're also gonna think arthropathies. You know, are they describing a deformed or, or a single joint that is, is quite tender or sore, or maybe a, a rheumatoid arthropathy where it might be a redness, some heat coming off the joint, maybe affecting smaller joints. You're also gonna to listen to possible signs of maybe an infection if the patient has mentioned that they've had a fever or they've noticed an exudate or redness swelling in a certain area. And you're also gonna to have to run through the differential in your mind as you're listening to of crystal forming arthropathies. Perhaps they have one joint that's quite tender and swollen, uh, a little bit of heat coming off of it again, skin changes, you might think gout or pseudogout. So we can't emphasize how important history is. It's the first part of the examination and it's gonna guide your examination and give you all the clues that you need to investigate when you're looking at a patient. One of the first things that we should consider is the location of pain. So in this case, if the patient has described an anterior hip pain, we have to run through a differential in our mind. Anterior hip pain could be suggestive of the joint itself, osteoarthritic changes, uh, fractures, such as a femoral neck fracture. We could also think septic arthritis, thinking of a femoral acetabular uh, syndrome, FAS, an impingement that may occur. We can also think of uh, neurological things. If there's a burning sensation, loss of sensation on the front, the anterior or the lateral aspect of the thigh, we can think neuralgia parasthetica, which would be a uh, entrapment of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. So depending on the location that the patient is pain, uh, pointing to, that's gonna start your thought process in terms of what this might be. Now, if the location of the hip pain is on the lateral aspect, then we're thinking of a different differential. First off, we start to think of greater trochanteric pain syndrome, which could be referred pain from the joint itself. It could be an abductor tendinopathy, or even pain from the internal deep stabilizers of the hip. We could also think of pain right at the greater trochanter as trochanteric bursitis, or if the patient describes a snapping sensation, we could think of external snapping hip syndrome. Now lastly, if the patient is complaining of posterior hip pain, then we have to think of the lumbar spine itself, the SI joint, or the hip itself as generators of pain. Most commonly in this area, we'll see a lumbar radiculopathy. We may see sacroiliitis, or even a deep gluteal or piriformis syndrome. 